Dr. Netisha Shirvastav. Welcome back to the Control System Lectures. This is uh, Rao Thorvitz criterion based lecture for the special cases. In the previous lecture, we had seen that the Rao Thorvitz criterion uh, for determining the stability of a system and how the Routes array is formed. Now, here we will see that uh, what are the special cases when we uh, build the Routes tabulation or the Routes array. So, the special cases are the following difficulties may occur that prevent routes tabulation from completing properly. The first case is that the first element in any one row out of the routes tabulation is 0, while the rest of that row has at least one non-zero term. For example, we have the term A6, A4, a 2, here we have a 5, a 3, a 1 and a naught here. Now, when forming we get an element here, we get elements here. Now, may be that the first element of any one row of the routes tabulation is 0. Now, in that case, if one of the element is 0 and while the rest are non zero elements. In that case, what happens that we cannot go ahead with the tabulation because a zero has appeared. So, this is one case that one of the table or one of the element in the table has a zero value. The second case could be the elements in one row of the routes tabulation are all zero. It means that this case is for the first element being 0 and the second case is if both the elements or if all the elements of that row become 0. That is special case number 2. So, these are the two special cases that could prevent the routes tabulation from going ahead. Now, if a 0 appears in the first row then the tabulation cannot be completed because the 0 comes in the denominator of the formation of the table. So, then the term becomes infinite as well as if both the rows or both the elements in the row are 0, then also we cannot go ahead with the routes array. Now, let us see what does this mean, the special case 1. Now, if a 0 appears in the first column of a row, then the elements of the next row will become infinite. That is, we cannot go ahead and the tabulation cannot continue. So, what is the solution for that? The, there are two solutions for that. That is, the first solution is substitute a small positive number e for the 0 and proceed to evaluate the rest of the routes array. For example, now we have obtained a 0 here. So, we are replacing that 0 with a small positive number assuming a very very small positive number and going ahead with the tabulation. That is this value is replaced by a small positive number <coughs> for the 0 and proceed to evaluate the rest of the routes array. And then we determine the signs of the first element of each row and then decide the stability. So, instead of keeping 0, we substitute the 0 value with a very, very small positive epsilon. The second step or the second way to uh, obtain the solution is, we are going to modify the original characteristic equation. Now, this tabulation is obtained by the original characteristic equation in the S domain. Now, the second way is, we can modify the original characteristic equation replacing S by 1 by z. So, wherever s is there, we replace it by 1 by z and then we apply the, we rearrange or we get the uh, characteristic equation in the form of s being replaced by 1 by z, then a new set of characteristic equation is obtained with the value of, uh, with the coefficients of z. And then we go ahead with the routes tabulation or the routes array and then find the apply the criterion to check whether the system is stable or not. So, this is how we can go ahead 
for the special case 1, if a 0 appears in the first uh, row or in the first element of any row. The special case 2, special case 2 is that the elements in one row of the row tabulation are all 0, that is both the elements are 0 in particular row. That is because of a 0 row, the routes tabulation, the routes test breaks down and cannot continue. Since we are having a 0, the tabulation cannot be completed. The following methods can be used to overcome the difficulty. Form the auxiliary equation A s equal to 0 and where it is formed by using the coefficients from the row preceding the row of zeros. For example, we have here has a 6, a 4, a 2, a naught, a 5, a 3, a 1, 0. We have certain elements a, b, c here and we have element d here. For example, this d and e both becomes 0 that is the entire row is now with a 0 element. In that case what happens? We are going to form an auxiliary equation a of s preceding the row of zeros. that is with the help of these coefficients we are going to form an auxiliary equation. Taking the derivative of the auxiliary equation is the next step with respect to s this give us that t a s pi d s equal to 0. Then once we get the coefficients from this value, we replace the row of zeros with coefficients of the derivative of the auxiliary equation. Once the auxiliary equation is obtained, then we take the derivative of the auxiliary equation and equate it to 0 and obtain the coefficients. The Next step is to continue with the routes tabulation in the usual manner with a newly formed row of coefficients replacing the row of zeros. Next is interpret the change of signs if any of the coefficients in the first column of the routes tabulation in the usual manner. So, this is how we can come over or overcome the difficulty if the entire row has 0 values. Now, in that case if the entire row has 0 values, we are going to look at uh, those coefficients preceding the row of zeros, form an auxiliary equation, then take the derivative of the auxiliary equation with uh, respect to s and uh, substitute the coefficients of the derivative in the row of zeros and then proceed with the routes tabulation. This is the solution for the special case 2. Now, let us take one example related to special case 1. This is the characteristic equation s raised to 5, s raised to 4 plus s 2 s cube plus 2 s square plus 3 s plus 1. So, we had two ways to overcome this difficulty for the special case 1 when there are uh, when there is 1 0 appearing in the first column of the routes array. Okay. So, we are going to first firstly form the route array, the highest is s raised to 5, this left side is for the reference, this is the route array, coefficient of s raised to 5 is 1, this coefficient is 1, the coefficient of s cube, the coefficient of s, then this value, the coefficient of s raised to 4, the coefficient of s raised to 2 and this 5 is replaced, the coefficient a naught. So, the next is 1 into 2 minus 1 into 2 divided by 1. So, this is resulting in 0 term. Now, when this is a 0 term here, what happens to the next term? For example, if you are using this 0 into 2 minus this value upon 0, then it is infinite, we get an infinity. So, we cannot go ahead with the 
formation of Routh stabilization. It can be seen that the first element of the third row that is this row has become 0. So, we cannot go ahead with the tabulation since we will get a value of infinity. Therefore, we are replacing 0 by a small number epsilon. We are replacing the 0, this 0, this value is been replaced by epsilon and then we go ahead with the solution. Now, what happens? If we go ahead 2 into what will be this term? Okay, this is directly obtained from 1 into 3 minus 1 into 5 upon 1. So, we get a minus 2 here. This sign is uh, not bothering us because we have to only check the elements of the first column. So, replacing 0 by a small value. So, what will be this term? This term is obtained by 2 into epsilon minus 1 into minus 2 upon epsilon. So, we get it as 2 epsilon plus 2 upon epsilon. So, this is how we get the first value. Then this is obtained and we get this value as 5 into 3 right and upon this we get this as 5 and what about this term the first element it is 2 epsilon plus 2 upon epsilon into minus 2 minus 5 epsilon divided by 2 epsilon plus 2 upon epsilon. So, this is this quantity. Now, here and then continuation we get this value as 5 because uh, this into this minus this divided by this we get it 5 right. Okay. Now, what about the uh, location what about the sign changes and how is this obtained? This is obtained by checking whether there are any sign changes in the first column. So, how is this done? Because we had replaced a 0 by epsilon, what we do is now if this is a very small value, this quantity if it is a very small value will always give a positive result. That is this term when epsilon tends to in 0 will always give us a positive value since it is added here positive and divided by a positive number. Therefore, this term will always be positive. right? So, this term will always be positive. So, there is no sign change, this is a small positive number and this is also a small positive number. Now, we are going to set the limit to 0, epsilon tends to 0. When you put epsilon tends to 0 here, what we get? 0 and this is 0, so we get it as minus 4 by 2, it is minus 2. So, this is obtained by the limit epsilon tends to 0 minus 4 epsilon minus 4 minus 5 epsilon square upon 2 epsilon plus 2. So, this is how we obtain the minus 2 value here and we can see that it is a negative number. Similarly, obtaining this we get it as 5. So, this is a positive number. Now, here we can see that there is because this is uh, minus 2 into 5 minus this upon minus 2. So, we get a positive number. Numerator and denominator both, both has a negative sign. So, we get a positive. So, there are two sign changes. This is positive, this is negative and again this is positive. So, the first element in the fourth row is this and it will always have a positive value when epsilon tends to 0. The first element in the fifth row is uh, becoming minus 2 and then there are two sign changes and hence the system is unstable. So, we replaced epsilon by uh, 0 by a small positive number epsilon and went ahead with 
setting the limit epsilon tends to 0 and obtaining the check remember we are not interested in the actual value of the uh, first element here we are interested to know whether the first element uh, of the, I mean, the elements of the first column is there any sign change. So, that is the main purpose here to check the stability of the system and hence we can see that there are two sign changes and hence the system is unstable having two poles in the right half of the S plane. We are uh, checking the same numerical uh, that is the same example using uh, method 2. In method 2 uh, what we had to do? Yeah, Modify the original characteristic equation replacing s by 1 by z. Now, replacing s by 1 by z, yeah, we are replacing s by 1 by z. So, all the terms which are s here becomes 1 by z. So, this becomes s raised to 5 is 1 by z raised to 5 plus 1 by z raised to 4 plus 2 by z cube 2 s square plus 3 s 2 s square plus 5 equal to 0. Simply replacing s by 1 by z and replacing s by 1 by z now we get a new set of characteristic equation the coefficients of z are here 5 and then we are rearranging it from the highest order and this is the new set of characteristic equation. We form the Routh array with the help of this so in the similar way, but here since we are see we can see that we have mentioned it as z 5, z 4, z 3, z 2, z 1 and z 0. So, now we are checking this with respect to the z domain. So, here it is 5, 2, 5, 2 and 1, 5, 2 and 1. Similarly, arranging the third uh, second row and completing the routes tabulation that is the routes array with the help of the uh, coefficients. So, it can be seen that there, there is a sign change here 3 minus 4 by 3, there is a sign positive to negative and here negative to positive. So, there are two sign changes that is two times the sign changes here. Therefore, the system is unstable having two poles in the right half of the z planes because this we are inferring after replacing s by 1 by z. So, that means that there are two sign changes in the z uh, domain in the z plane. So, we can say that the number of roots in the s plane are which is on the right hand side is also 2. We will take the example for the special case 2. It is the consider the characteristic equation s raised to 5 plus 4 s square plus 8 s cube plus 8 s square plus 7 s plus 4. So, we are arranging the <coughs> route array here. The coefficient of s raised to phi the highest order term then 8 then 7 4 8 and the value 4 here. So, the first and the second row are arranged with help of the characteristic equation then we go ahead with the routes tabulation we get this value 4 into 8 minus 8 divided by 4 as 6, 4 into 7 minus 4 into 1 upon 4 is 6. Similarly, we get these two values 4 and 4 and then we can see that 4 into 6 minus 4 into 6 upon 4 is a 0 value. Here also 4 into 0, 6 into 0 upon 4 is a 
0 value. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th. The fifth row, we can see that the fifth row has prematurely terminated, we have not reached s raise to 0. However, when forming the table, we should have got, we should have terminated at s raise to 0. We should have terminated at this point, but we can see that the premature termination has occurred at the s raise to 1 row. So, the step is to form the auxiliary equation preceding this row that is preceding the row is this, the row preceding the, this is the preceding row and then we can see that this is the auxiliary equation A s, A s is formed by this is the term s square. So, we are going to write 4 s square skipping the other one it becomes 4 plus 4 equal to 0. So, as we had arranged with alternate coefficients, here also it is the first one is for s square that is 4 s square, where we are writing the preceding auxiliary equation plus 4 equal to 0. Then we take the derivative of this value, derivative of a s upon d s is, when you take the derivation derivative, we get it as 8 s plus 0, we are getting the derivative of as 8 s plus 0. Next step is to continue with the route stabilization. See here it is 4 and 4 and this row has become 0, then what we do is we keep this the same till here it is the same. Here for the s raise to 1 row we got a 0, we are going to replace it by the coefficients of the derivative with respect to s formed from the auxiliary equation. That is it is 8 and 0, then we go ahead with the calculation. So, here we are not uh, checking the sign, I mean we are checking the sign here and we can see that there are no sign changes. So, this implies that there are no sign changes implies that there are no roots in the right half of the s plane, but if prematurely 0 appears in the uh, complete row that the complete row is having value of zeros, all the coefficients are 0 that means that there are roots on the j omega axis. So, that is to be checked since there are no sign changes it indicates that the right half s plane has uh, there are no roots in the right half of the s plane, but since we prematurely uh, uh, ended with the route stabilization it means that there are roots on the j omega axis and the remaining roots whatever would be on the left half of the s plane. So, since there are no sign changes we can infer that there are no roots on the right half of the s plane and then to find what are the roots on the j omega axis, this itself indicates us that there are roots on the j omega axis because 0 appeared here. So, this indicates that there are roots on the j omega axis. Solving the auxiliary equation, we are going to solve this auxiliary equation to know what is the value of the roots which are lying on the j omega axis. The roots which are lying on the j omega axis are 1 and minus 1. So, these two roots are lying on the j omega axis and there are no roots on the right half of the s plane, no roots on r h s of s plane. So, the system under, under, under consideration is limitedly stable that is marginally stable because roots are lying on the j omega axis. So, here we have discussed the two cases special cases of Routh Hurwitz criterion. Thank you.